Hello and welcome to Spectrum of Wisdom, your channel for insightful and enlightening content. Today, we're diving into the world of a truly remarkable creature, the Goldcrest. The Goldcrest, scientifically known as Regulus Regulus, is a very small passerine bird in the kinglet family. This tiny bird, often referred to as the king of the birds in European folklore, is known for its colorful golden crest feathers. Its scientific name, Regulus, translates to petty king or prince, a fitting title for this charming little bird. Despite its small size, the goldcrest is a fascinating subject. It's the smallest bird in Europe, with a length of 8.5 to 9.5 centimeters and a weight of just 4.5 to 7.0 g. But don't let its size fool you. This bird is constantly on the move, searching for insects to eat. In today's video, we'll explore the life of the goldcrest, its habits, its habitat, and the unique characteristics that make it a true jewel of nature. So, sit back, relax, and join us on this journey into the world of the goldcrest. Let's get started. In the heart of a vast coniferous forest, high up in the mountains, lives a tiny bird known as the goldcrest. This bird is no ordinary creature, it makes its home up to 3,000 meters above sea level. Its world is a symphony of spruce, larch, Scots pine, silver fir, and mountain pine. It even finds comfort in, in man-made landscapes where introduced conifers like Douglas fir stand tall. The woods teem with these birds, with densities reaching up to 591 pairs per square kilometer. In fact, goldcrests constitute over 60% of all birds found in the plantations of Welsh Douglas fir and Norway spruce. They are a community, a testament to the thriving life in the coniferous woodland. Goldcrests are versatile. Unlike their more specialized neighbors, the Eurasian nuthatch and the Eurasian tree creeper, who forage on tree trunks, goldcrests do not need large woodlands. Their population density is independent of forest size. Once the breeding season is over, they readily move into deciduous trees and shrubs, heathland, and similar more open habitats. A subspecies of goldcrests lives in the mountain region previously occupied by lori silva, but now dominated by tree heaths. They are common only in that habitat, becoming rare in pine forests, where they occur only where tree heath is also available. Goldcrests have a vast range, breeding from Macaronesia to Japan. They are common in middle and northern temperate and boreal latitudes of Europe. These birds are monogamous, and during the breeding season, the males sing while foraging, not from a perch. Their display of bowing their head towards another bird and raising their colored crest is a spectacle. Their nest is a well-insulated cup-shaped structure built in three layers. The outer layer is made from moss, small twigs, twigs, cobwebs, and lichen, the cobwebs also being used to attach the nest to the thin branches that support it. The middle layer is moss, which is lined by an inner layer of feathers and hair. The nest is larger, shallower, and less compact than that of the firecrest, with an internal diameter of about 9.0 centimeters. It is often suspended from a hanging branch, usually at no great height. Goldcrests are diligent parents. They start laying eggs at the end of April into early May. The eggs are whitish with very indistinct buff, gray, or brown markings at the broad end. The clutch size is typically 9 to 11 eggs, but ranges from 6 to 13. The female keeps the eggs warm with her brood patch and also by putting her warm legs into the middle of the pile between the eggs. Second clutches are common, laid usually while the first nest still has young. The male builds the second nest, then feeds the young in the first nest while the female is incubating in the second. When the first brood has fledged, he joins the female in feeding the second brood. In the heart of the coniferous forest, the female goldcrest is a diligent and dedicated parent. She is not normally fed by her mate while incubating, and is known to be a tight sitter, reluctant to leave the nest when disturbed. She has even been recorded as continuing to attend the nest when it has been moved, or even when it is being held. The eggs are maintained at a steady 36.5 degrees Celsius, with the female regulating the temperature by varying the time spent sitting. She leaves the nest more with increasing air temperature, and incubates more tightly when the light intensity is lower early and late in the day. The incubation period lasts for 16 to 19 days, after which the chicks hatch and are brooded for a further 17 to 22 days before they fledge. Both parents feed the chicks and fledged young, and in very hot weather, the female has been noted as taking drops of water to her chicks in her bill. 
This species becomes sexually mature after one year, and has an annual adult mortality of over 80%, giving it a life expectancy of around 8 months, which is the shortest for any bird apart from a few Coturnix species. The Goldcrest's diet consists of a wide variety of prey, especially spiders, caterpillars, bugs, springtails, and flies. Larger prey such as oak bush crickets and tortrix moths may sometimes be taken. Flying insects are taken in hovering flight but not normally pursued. There is a record of a gold crest attacking a large dragonfly in flight, only to be dragged along by the insect before releasing it unharmed. Gold crests will occasionally feed on the ground among leaf litter with tits. Throughout the gold crest's range, the main predator of small woodland birds is the Eurasian sparrowhawk, which has a diet consisting of up to 98% birds. Merlins, tawny and long-eared owls also hunt gold crests. The erratic movements and flights of small woodland birds, which are vulnerable to attack while away from cover, may help to confuse their predators. The goldcrest has only very rarely been recorded as a host of the common cuckoo, a widespread European brood parasite. The goldcrest is a host of the widespread moorhen flea, and of the Laos Philopterus reguli. The Amblycerus mitricinus frenatus has been found on the eastern goldcrest subspecies, and at the other end of the range in birds of the nominate subspecies on the pharaohs and in Spain. These lice move over the host's body, and have strong mouthparts that pierce the host's skin so that they can feed on blood, and sometimes feather material. A number of feather mites have been recorded in the genus Regulus, these mites live on fungi growing on the feathers. The fungi found on the plumage may feed on the keratin of the outer feathers or on feather oil. Aristotle and Pliny both wrote about the legend of a contest among the birds to see who should be their king, the title to be awarded to the one that could fly highest. Initially, it looked as though the eagle would win easily, but as he began to tire, a small bird that had hidden under the eagle's tail feathers emerged to fly even higher and claimed the title. Following from this legend, in much European folklore the wren has been described as the king of the birds or as a flame-bearer. The fiery crowns of the goldcrest and firecrest make them more likely to be the original bearers of these titles. Despite its small size and humble appearance, the goldcrest has had a significant impact on literature, even being the subject of Charles Tennyson Turner's short poem, The Goldcrested Wren, first published in 1868. This tiny bird, with its fiery crown and resilient spirit, continues to inspire and captivate those who are fortunate enough to witness its life in the heart of the coniferous forest. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the heart of the coniferous forest, home to the resilient and inspiring goldcrest. We hope you've enjoyed this exploration of nature's wonders as much as we have. If you found this video enlightening and want to continue learning with us, please consider subscribing to our channel, Spectrum of Wisdom. Don't forget to hit the bell icon to receive notifications for our upcoming videos. We appreciate your support and look forward to bringing you more content that illuminates the wisdom found in the natural world. Until next time, keep exploring, keep learning, and remember, wisdom is all around us. Goodbye and take care.